seconds talk about his start to the season of course the Milton Eagles uh, certainly the number one team in the state of Georgia but took a you know sort of jumped up in the polls guys Maggie Wilkins Bud Sager with us you know Milton has really jumped up in the polls man it's amazing where are they in the national poll are they in the top ten they used to be in the number four but now it's taken a jump up to number one yeah so top ten all that kind of stuff so you know it's interesting to see I, you know it's still a mythical national championship uh, last year was one of the only years uh, but you know people are still looking for it and uh, you know anybody who else is go- is there anybody else going for right now in the national headlines other than Milton Harold Payne they got two they are big I think they're going to get big but uh, I believe Buford was going for national but they didn't do the national and then there's the big um, what's the 300 the top 300 teams I think that's USA football, football America yeah yep and so BP was like at 230 last week in that, and, and Milton was quite close to like 600. Okay. All right, every day we start with the fast break headlines. Uh, the first one, uh, we've got a good middle school one. Remember, we cover all sports. The middle school will have uh, our middle school uh, segment in about 30 minutes. And, uh, but uh, Redan and Chapel Hill both improved to 4-0 and in middle school action. Uh, those are the top teams. Uh, region leaders Redan and Chapel Hill put together shutouts uh, to up their season record 2-4-0 in DeKalb County Middle School football play this past Saturday. By the way, DeKalb County does a fabulous job with statistics. Uh, they're really the only gentlemen, and I know both of you know this, they're the only county um, that keeps track of everything. They do a great job. I always say that. Mark Brock is to DeKalb County that Claude Felton was to Georgia. Yes. You, yeah. you cannot top them. Yeah, they do. A, DeKalb does a great job. And uh, like I said, Re- Redan and Chapel Hill put together shutouts. The Panthers from Chapel Hill, 4-0, 2-0 in the region. They were led by Makai King from Big Day for the Rolls Royce 34 win over the Stone Mountain Pirates. Uh, Pirates fell to 1-3, 0-2. At Adams Stadium to keep their spot atop the Region 4 standings with a fourth consecutive shutout. King scored three touchdowns in a lot of different fashions, including a rushing touchdown, a touchdown reception, and a pick six to lead the charge for the Panthers. He also added a second interception to stop another Pirates drive. Matthew Brown and Romillo Jackson added one touchdown each in the win. Nassar Ikbal. Uh, was four for five on extra points, which is impressive at the middle school level. Um, the Redan Raiders, 4-0 and 2-0, just like Chapel Hill, is a lone remaining undefeated team in Region 3 after shutting down the McNair Mustangs. Uh, the Mustangs fell to 0-4, 0-2 in the region, uh, but Redan beat McNair 40 to nothing at Godfrey Stadium. Of course, that's Old Panthersville. Redan's win was keyed by a huge performance from Benjamin Jackson. Jackson scored three offensive touchdowns, two two-point conversions, while adding 12 tackles and a pick six on the defensive side of the ball. Jaden Sumbly added a touchdown and two-point conversion on offense for the Raiders. The shutout by the defense was led by Deion Brown Martin, Anthony Barclay, and Jaden Sumbly, who had sacks and multiple tackles for a loss. Linebacker Tyler Clark added two interceptions in the game, and Cameron McClintock had a huge hit to force a fumble. So we want to give thumbs up to both Redan and Chapel Hill in DeKalb County on the middle school report. Uh, at number two, you have Austin softball. Uh, uh, Mia Johnson, she committed to Arkansas Razorback uh, yesterday. She was a corner infielder and utility player. She already holds Austin's career home run uh, record. Uh, she was first team all county and all region selection last season as a sophomore, class of 2026, and she was also a PBF All American. So she's one of the best players we have in our state. And also, Austin continues to stay hot. They took the 17 and 2 after a 10 and 2 victory uh, against Grayson. They're the number two team in Region 4C. All right, headline number three. This goes back to last week's results from the North Oconee and Jefferson game. North Oconee scored the 35 nothing win. That snapped Jefferson's scoring streak at 160 games. That dated back to 2011 and was 16th all-time. And so Todd Holcomb, the newsletter, they put out what are the 
current active streak. So if 160 was at 16th all time, you have BT at 173. That dates to back to 2010. And then leading the list is Colquitt County, 2014 active win. That dates back to about the 2008 end. So you have Colquitt, Camden, Cartersville, and BT leading the longest scoring streak. All right, and then at number four, Gwinnett County Volleyball Championships are going to begin this week. Uh, it's going to be the 18th annual county tournament. Pool play is going to begin at six locations, Buford, Seaborn Christian, Mountain View, Mill Cross, North Gwinnett, and Shiloh, before bracket play on Saturday at three host sites. GAC uh, will host Saturday's top division. The gold bracket will crown the overall county champion, and secondary will host both the silver and bronze brackets. The top two teams from each pool advance to Saturday's gold bracket. Uh, for the championship. Uh, Brookwood is the defending champion after winning uh, county for the first time and snapped the Buford's two-year hold on the title last season. North Gwinnett won 2018 and 2020 championships. Its first two, the Seabrook won its first and only county title in 2019. And the Buford also won five straight county titles uh, from 2013 to 2017 after Western won five of the first two. And, and real quick on the yeah. county championships, you know, when I was at Lakeside in the 1970s, you know, beyond football, because football is not great for a county championship, but those other sports are great for county championships, and I'm glad Gwinnett still does them, DeKalb still does them. Um, I remember, you know, we had great gymnastics. DeKalb had just great gymnastics teams back then, and, and county championships are great. I mean, those are nice resume builders. Yeah, Certainly. I think you have for like track and field now, uh, gymnastics, but yeah, you don't really get it in like a lacrosse or baseball. But when we do those bios for Lakeside, you see uh, yeah, how, how, many how you guys dominated swimming. the cab. Yeah, that's for another sure. vision. Yep. All right, headline number five. So this week you're going to notice a few more Thursday night matchups than Friday, and there's some big ones. Forsyth County is going to be on fall break this next week, so they're going to start early this week. You've got Lambert and North Forsyth, and then West Forsyth and Denmark is going to be tomorrow night. It's a big deal because last week Lambert kind of stunned West Forsyth, who we saw in the Corky Kale Dave Hunter Classic looked really good against Prince Ave. They fell short, uh, but they shut them out 13 to nothing. And it's a really kind of bizarre result because Lambert was giving up about 40 points per game. So they must have made adjustments. They'll be taking on North Forsyth. And then you have Denmark taking on West Forsyth. Uh, Denmark took Cambridge to overtime a few weeks ago. Yes, they did. So high scoring game too, Kerry. Exactly. So with these Forsyth teams, we've seen it in a lot of sports. They all seem to cancel each other out, and it's a log jam for the playoffs. So I think this will have playoff implications, and we'll start the week five slate early. And before we get to the high school football daily, gentlemen, um, you know you're, you know, basically talking about. You know, we are halfway through the season Friday night. Yeah, this week is the six. sixth week. Yeah, yeah so we'll be at number six. So that's, I mean, that's it's gone quick. It's going quick. It really is going quick. And like, you like, it feels like Corky Kale went so long ago. I know it does. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, so, it's weird. Yeah. All right, well, our partner, Georgia High School Football Daily, of course, they come out with a really, really good newsletter uh, every morning. Uh, Todd Holcomb, Chip Say, Ted Langford, our partners over there. They had a really interesting topic this morning. Their spotlight was on the 25 teams, gentlemen, that are undefeated and unranked. Um, and we've got a couple of them that you know I want to talk to you guys about. Sure. Uh, Cambridge 4A. Uh, Cambridge was six and five a year ago. They're five and zero under first year coach Tyler Jones, uh, who was sub class 7A runner up Walton's offensive coordinator last season. And that's what. You know, Craig, I know that's one of the things Walton's going through right now is that change in offensive coordinator. Uh, you know Tyler. Um, I know he's doing a great job at Cambridge. Um, both Cambridge and number four, uh, Blessed Trinity, appear to be the favorites uh, in Region 6 with Cambridge right now given a, almost a 40% chance of the title, according to Maxwell. Uh, the two teams will play each other on November 1st. Uh, and Cambridge is Georgia High School Football Daily's Class 4A uh, most improved winning team in today's improvement tracker. And right now, their projected finishes they might they could win they could win nine games. Yeah, we said it was one of the best hires of the off season because Cambridge mm -hmm. already had the ingredients there: tough players, uh, great offensive line play, and you add that creativity offensively. They are going to be very dangerous. They seem to be getting better and better. You mentioned Ola though. Ola kind of 
first to the seeds last year. They almost beat Warner Robins. They earned a playoff spot. It was their best season in school history, but they're 5-0 and for the first time ever this year, and they are playing outstanding defense. They're giving up just two points a game coming into this most recent win against Eagles Landing. They beat Jones County. And so they're a team that not only has already made history, they might get home field advantage for the first time this year. And also in other schools, Long County, uh, the Blue Tide was – 20 was, uh, this is amazing, they were 2-45 and 45 over the five seasons prior to uh, Mike Feaster's 2021 hiring. They're 21-16 and 16 since, 4-0 this season. Uh, best start in school history. Uh, Maxwell pre predicts, projects Long County will finish with a school record eight victories. Guys, y'all know much about what's going on at Long? I actually have them ranking up for Atlanta Paul. They are a top five team um, according to Long. They moved up a lot actually this week. I think it was two or three um, spots. So they've been a good team. I like them. I think they can potentially make some noise this year. How about Lowndes, guys? Undefeated. right? I think unranked still, though, right now. Yes. Yeah, unranked right now. They're 5-0 <laughs> they're and o for the ninth time this century. Uh, the previous eight came along with a top four state ranking. So typically when they start off this well, uh, they do real well. And their projected finish is 8.2 wins. And then Seconder is the other one in their third varsity season. They're four and zero after going zero and seven, and three and seven. They have uh, Roswell this week, don't they? Yep. Yeah, yeah, they that's do. Be All right, real quickly, fun. let's uh, let's. I tell you what, let's go to the trivia question. Yesterday, what Georgia high school had the highest enrollment numbers during the GHSA's most recent reclassification? That was Brookwood with three thousand eight hundred and eighty. And then real quick on the trivia question, we'll talk about it when we get back. 21 Georgia counties have exactly two GHSA football teams, and two of them, both teams, are undefeated. Which one are they? When we get back, we'll talk about that. I.J. Rosenberg, the Georgia High School Sports Daily, powered by IBEW. Real quickly, uh, from the Georgia High School uh, Daily, Football Daily in the morning, of course, we have our Hall of Fame, Feastville Hall of Fame, coming up in late October. Uh, George Butch Atkinson uh, was the profile, was profiled today. Uh, George is an 11-year NFL player, two-time Pro Bowl performer for the Oakland Raiders. He's going in this year. He actually played in the GIA Class 2 championship game in 1963. Of course, the GIA was the all uh, African American League, which was in existence for about 25 years. Uh, finally, when integration took place, um, that went away. Uh, but 
Atkinson was a really, really good player. He actually went and signed with Morehouse College, became a four-year starter there. Uh, the, Ra the Raiders actually drafted Atkinson in the seventh round, and the defensive back was a 1968 AFL defensive rookie of the year. That's a pretty good draft pick uh, right there. And he was also inducted into the Georgia Hall of Fame in 2020 and is a finalist for the Black College Football Hall of Fame in 2024. Hey guys, the Black College Football Hall of Fame, which is done here at the same place, they do it at the College Hall of Fame. I'm gonna tell you what, that is harder to get into the Black College Football Hall of Fame than it is the NFL Hall of Fame. Yeah, I agree Serious. with that. Yeah, I mean, it is. So many great players. And so Well, and, and they limit it. Yes. They limit it to four or five every year. I've been a couple of couple of them. They're, they're just awesome. They really are. And it, it's great to see, you know, those, you know, the those colleges that didn't get the attention that the white colleges got, you know, during those years for those guys to get in. And it's, it's nice to have a place for them. I want to go back real quickly to the trivia question. Uh, like I said, 21 Georgia counties have exactly two GHSA football teams and two of them, both teams are undefeated. Which are they? Uh, hint, one's in South Georgia, the other's in Northwest Georgia. Any guesses, guys? I'm going to go Lowry is the county down below. Uh, okay. You're right there. Valdosta and Lowndes are both undefeated. Yeah, okay. And I'm thinking uh, up top. Maybe Tatuga? Maybe? I'm not going to say anything. I want people to answer and for us to get. That's pretty good, though, Dodger. <laughs> he did pretty well. Now, I think he might have cheated, but that's all right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, anyway. All right, let's go to Seth Elberby, our guy in Macon. Seth, you with us? There he is. Seth, of course, uh, handles a lot of stuff for Score Atlanta. Uh, and he's got, he was the first at Score Atlanta to have his own studio. Um, his is nice. And uh, <laughs> he, he, he spends a lot of time in there for Score Atlanta. Uh, but he also handles all the softball rankings. So let's go, let's go classification really quick, Seth. By classification, let's start off with 6A. Of course, Buford still at the top of 6A. We've got yes, Buford, sir. East Coweta, Brookwood, North Cobb, Grovetown, North Paulding, Archer, Grayson, Denmark, Mill Creek. Any big changes this week, Seth? Not really any big shifts other than Class 5A, Class 2A. Um, you know, that Gordon Lee tournament I mentioned last week over the weekend had some interesting results. Um, you know, let me run down these this list. And, yeah, let's and, go and down we'll, 6A. Yeah, let's talk about 6A and what happened with some of these teams the last couple of days. Well, I mean, the most notable shifts, uh, you know, with with uh, in any of these polls were were below 6A. 6A re relatively stayed kind of the same. Um, you know, with with Buford and East Coweta up top, uh, and and I mean, it really did. It, most of the teams played as should this week. Um, but it's it's worth. There's there's a lot of interesting shifts if you go to 5A. I moved Lassiter, uh, uh, Lassiter and Seckinger, but I, I could have kept. There's a there's a combination of the 5A and um, excuse me and Division One um, with Gordon Lee and Wesleyan. You know they were all involved in that uh, the Gordon Lee tournament, and so there's a few a few shifts that could have changed. Um, Gordon Lee lost to Wesleyan head to head in class head to head um, six to four. I could leave left Wesleyan at number one, but Gordon Lee responded. Um, well, that, I'll tell you what, before we get down there, let's go back yeah. to 5A. Let's, let's sort of go okay. down in the classification. So 5A, you talked about Lassiter, Seconder, East Paulding, East Paulding. Pope, Greenbrier um, are the top five. Yeah, and you got Effingham County, Northgate, Houston County Veterans, and South Effingham sort of filling out the, uh, the bottom there. Um, in 4A, Eastside, Northside Columbus, uh, both – Two talented quality teams, uh, Cartersville and Harris County as well. Ola um, coming in at number five, Wayne County, East Forsyth, Alatoona, Kell, and North Oconee rounding out that top uh, top ten there. So was anything uh, in 4A real quickly, Seth, anything new in 4A, though? Um, I mean, the, the, the east side, north, uh, north side Columbus, Harris County, I mean, that's – those are – you know, clearly the top three, and, and I like those at the end of the season. Uh, I mean, I think they're going to be going into the playoffs. I think those are, you know, three, four of the most powerful teams. Um, you know, and in 3A, top-ranked Heritage, Katusa, uh, Pickens, Lafayette, Southeast Bullock, and West Lawrence uh, filling the top five there. 
Um, do we have, hold on, do we have the 3A graphic? There we go. There's the 3A graphic. So go back to that a little bit, Seth. Yeah, just 3A of... with uh, t Heritage Catusa ranked up top with Pickens and Lafayette um, at two and three. Southeast Bullock and West uh, Lawrence filling out that top five there. Peach County, uh, my mother's alma mater, Go Trojans. Uh, they're at number six. Uh, Cherokee Bluff at number seven with uh, Harlem, Jefferson, and LaGrange uh, filling out that top ten. Uh, with 2A, sliding down to 2A a little bit. Um, Appling County at the top with Hebron could be one or two. I mean, they're they're fantastic programs. Cook, Morgan County, and Pike County filling out that top five. Uh, Sonoraville, Prince Ave, Rockmark, Columbus, and Stevens County in the top ten. Um, but Class A Division One is one that needs to kind of be talked about. Um, I put Gordon Lee up top. They are there. They overtook Wesleyan. Granted. Friday, they lost a head-to-head -head in class match, in in class game against Wesley in six to four. Normally, that is what matters, but you know, I I, I saw them respond, and they responded by beating class five A number one second year nine zero, class two A number two Hebron four one, and North Murray nine two. Um, and so, I mean, that's just a rebound that that I thought, hey, you know what, move them up top. Wesleyan's number two, Banks County, Toombs County, and Heard County filling out that top five. Um, and it's interesting, Seconder fell to Lassiter, um, you know, which kind of sort of helped uh, uh, the the Lassiter get to the top of 5A there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but, yeah, it's it, it, that could, you know, you could have Wesleyan at the top of Division One just as easily as you could have, uh, have Gordon Lee. Um, and then Division Two, um, Lanier County, Irwin County, Screven County, Glasscock County, and Wheeler County in that top five there, um, with Georgia Military, ECI, Wilcox County, Metter, and Bowden rounding out the top ten. Um, you know, and, and, and last week Najee kind of caught me off guard with some player spotlights, and 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 rightfully so. Um, it was a good question, and. I'm glad he asked it. So, you know, I looked around, um, you know, Kendall Wells from North Oconee, uh, she's a senior and, and she's Oklahoma commit plays catcher, first base, third base, uh, named been named region player of the year, class four, a first team, all state and led them to the championship game last season. They lost to heritage Catuso, which dropped down to uh three a this year. Uh, but she's rated as the number 10 recruit in the class of 2025 and just, uh, you know, quality player for the, there for North Oconee. Um, senior pitcher Presley Harrison uh, plays for Appling County, uh, Class 2A, number one Appling. She's staying home. She's a UGA commit, uh, bats left-handed, pitches right-handed, recently recorded her 900th strikeout at Appling County, which is it's pretty amazing. Pretty, yeah, it's impressive. Um, and Raiders is number 13, uh, recruit in the 2025 class. And then Seckinger has a junior outfielder, Milan Torres. Um, she she bats and throws left-handed, um, and she's got a 6.85 average, 37 hits, 54 at bats, 22 RBIs, and 31 runs, and is the number three rated junior, um, you know, in, in in the nation. So, uh, quality players coming yeah. out of those three programs. Seth, before you leave, tell us because because softball wraps up before anything else. Mm -hmm. But we're getting closer to the regions, correct? And, of course, in Columbus, the playoffs. Sort of take us through the next couple of weeks and how they'll yeah. work. All right, so teams have to complete uh, the region fast pitch softball October 10th. And that is going to – they report the winners the 11th, and then the first event is the, the, the playoffs – or, excuse me, yeah, the playoffs. And they will be October 14th to the 17th um and then those two rounds seed the tournament brackets that go to columbus um so they'll have two rounds there the 14th to the 17th and october 21st to the 24th and they will be in columbus the 30th of this month to the 2nd of november so you've got the you know those playoff brackets that'll each seed the eight eight team tournament brackets in columbus for double elimination and Go so we're getting that. there. I mean, we're All close. Right. We're well, we appreciate the the volleyball up. Excuse me, the softball update every Wednesday.
And Seth, uh, keep working hard, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much, Ida. You guys have a good one. All right. We're going to be right back with the Milton head coach. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Hey, coach, how you doing? Hey, good, good. How's it going? Good. Congratulations, man. Good job. Thank you, sir. What's going on, coach? Hey, what's up, man? Good to see you as always. <laughs> Cheers. You too. We're back at the Georgia High School Sports Daily, powered by IBEW Sports Coach Lee Martin. Score Atlanta Studios want to welcome in uh, Milton coach Ben Reeves. Uh, Milton went off to a 4-0 start. We were talking about Coach Milton earlier, ranked number one in the last 5A here in Georgia and also uh, ranked nationally as high as, as number 10. Uh, coach, congratulations. Uh, Open season at a 13-10 win over Buford, then went and played American Heritage 37-28, uh, knocked out uh, Alpharetta 58-0, and then uh, beat BP last weekend 28-14. Coach, let's start here. Um, BP gave you a pretty good football game, didn't they? Uh, you know, the, a smaller school, private school, uh, but kind of a little bit of a rivalry. The schools within about five, six miles of each other. But they gave you a football game. Yeah, they're a, a very solid team, very well coached. Um, they're going to do really well in 4A this year. And uh, we, we knew that it would be a battle. You know, anytime that you play a rivalry game, uh, you're, you're going to get uh, the other one's best shot and throw records and classifications out the window, so to speak. This was actually the first time that Milton and Blessed Trinity had ever played in, uh, in, in history. 
So uh, it's just a great environment. Um, you know, good hard nosed football on both sides, and and they played hard. They played well, um, as we knew that they would, um, and gave us a great game. And uh, you know, plenty of plenty of motivational factors and things for us to work on in practice this week. Coach, really quickly, I want to kind of go to Broward just real quick. Big win against American Head. You coach, obviously, Ethan Barbera has that kind of game sealing touchdown catch. Talk about being in that atmosphere and those guys rallying and you take the adversity throughout the whole game. Yeah, really going back to uh, game one and two, you know, Buford and then American Heritage, there was just so much hype uh, around this team in the offseason with winning the state championship last year and then returning so many key guys. And we created a schedule to where we were going to find out if the hype was real or not, you know, those first two games. So putting ourselves uh, just out there in, in those two big games against top 25 teams in the country at the time uh, were um, huge moments for our team. And to go and do it on the road uh, in Miami on uh, ESPN national television in front of a packed out stadium uh, really showed me that, you know, we're, um, you know, pretty close to what people say that we are. And our guys are uh, willing and ready and able to, you know, play in big moments and um, overcome adversity and just play a game for four quarters and see what happens. Now, before I talk to the clinic, I do want to ask you about some underrated players that don't get enough shine on your football team, but I visited you in the spring, Coach. Billy Wade Golden had three and a half sacks in the win against Western Kenny. Tell me about him and C.J. Lester, his start to the season, an awesome guy, made some made the Eastern Kentucky. What's, uh, how has things kind of been like for him? Yeah, so Billy, you know, he's um, he's one that we knew was going to have a great career here at Milton, just behind some high-level guys and kind of taking on a role that, you know, Ja'Cory Stewart and, and uh, Jack Lawson were um, were fulfilling last season. And, uh, you know, Billy is, has dedicated himself to the weight room. He's um, become a better student. He, he's become a better player, takes hard coaching, and he's reaping the benefits from that. Uh, because the other side is he is highly athletic and has all the tools, you know. So he, he was able to pick up his first couple of offers this week, so very proud of him. And then TJ is just doing what um, TJ does. You know, last year he was up and down with a couple of nagging injuries, and there were many games to where he went out there and battled, and teams didn't get to really see his best. Uh, teams were getting to see his best this year. And he's showing, you know, it, proving me right what I always say of, I've never seen one person tackle the guy. You know, he just he, – he, he's so elusive, great vision, hard to bring down. Um, and, and the difference that he's showing this year that people um, did have a question mark of is what is his speed like? And a lot of his runs are breakaway runs where he's showing that he can get out there and, um, you know, take it to the house and run away from some guys. So very proud of those two and the start that they've had to this season. We're talking to number one ranked coach. Uh, Fid Reeves from Milton on the Georgia High School Sports Daily, powered by IDW Six Fifty Six Fifty. Coach, talk a little bit about Milton. You won it last year. Um, I would say a little bit of an upset over Walton. I would say probably Walton went into the game as the favorite, um, but you win it last year. Um, you won it what five six years ago. What has happened at Milton? I, you know, I grew up. I went to Lakeside. Uh, Rose, uh, raised my family in Roswell. Uh, Milton was sort of uh, sort of the stepchild for many years in football. Uh, but tell me what's going on at that school and why y'all have been able to assemble this much talent. Uh, obviously got a great coaching staff led by you. But tell us a little bit about what's happening up in Northport. Yeah, you know, for me, I think it all goes back to 2017 whenever – uh, we made a, or we as a Milton made a change at head coach and brought in Adam Clack. And, you know, no disrespect to any of the coaches that were here prior to that. I think sometimes in organizations, uh, change is just good. You know, a, a breath of fresh air is just good. And Coach Black was able to come in and provide that and bring in uh, a pretty high level staff. And early on, you know, we, we just had things that, that worked out for us. You know, we worked hard, we created our own breaks, but we won some games that hadn't been won, you know, uh, previously and were able to kind of change up the face of the program and just how we lift and what we run on offense, what we run on defense and bring some excitement to, to Milton football, some new age excitement, um, I'll say. And um, just over the course of the years of kids buying in and um, really just trying to leave it better than they found it. And then, you know, us as coaches and, and the community 
pouring a lot into our feeder system, you know, making sure that our sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade teams um, are, are getting coached up at a high level and doing things that they're going to be expected to do once they get up to high school. And I think we're reaping the benefits of that now. Um, and that was a process, like I said, that just started so many years ago. And, um, you know, each year, each team just has the mindset of we got to continue the traditions that, that we've, we've started and the success and, and hold the line, so to speak, and leave this program better than we found it. And we're talking to Milton head coach Ben Reeves. Coach, <laughs> tell us a little bit about um, the stadium. I mean, with the football program doing so well, the stadium's not really that big. And unfortunately, I know when you all get later in the playoffs, you have to either bring in seats or move the games uh, to another stadium. Has there been any thought with the way Milton's playing these days? To, uh, and it's a beautiful campus, a beautiful building, and it is a beautiful stadium, but it's small. But has there been any thought of maybe expanding the stadium? Uh, you know, I, there may have been talks, you know, above my pay grade. Uh, you know, the truth is our stadium – can and actually has held, I think, over 6,000 people before. You know, the issue is there's not 6,000 seats, and that's that's what they go off of. But, uh, you know, if, if we if they ever want to expand the stadium, we're all for it. If not, you know, we'll try to bring in seats or, or go play uh, wherever we're asked to. Um, I just hope that we continue to have success, and that's even an issue, you know, moving forward each and every year, uh, meaning that we get deep into the playoffs. Well, Coach, we want to congratulate you on your start. Uh, hopefully we'll be putting you on TV soon. Uh, please say hello to everybody up at Milton. And, again, thanks for coming on. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me on and letting me talk a little bit of Milton football. Thanks. All right, we've got underrated and overlooked come up. You're watching the Georgia High School Sports Daily. All right, I want to welcome you back to the Georgia High School Sports Daily on the Peachtree Sports Network, powered by IBEW Chapter 613. Don't forget our game Friday night. We've got a good one. We've got North Cobb undefeated. Uh, they'll go and play Walton. Uh, that game will be 8 o'clock. We'll come on to have 8.07 uh, kickoff. And, of course, you can watch the game on the Atlanta News First app. You can watch it on the National Federation High School Network. So if you're other games and you're looking for digital outlets, uh, those are some of them, Zine, the CBS streaming portal. But really the best place to go watch a game on Friday night, if you're not 
in front of your computer or television is that Atlanta News First app, and you can download that uh, through Google or Apple. All right, we've got our middle school spotlight with Alex Benson uh, from Born to Compete. You know, it's interesting, Alex, I was looking at your website, borntocompete.com. Very, very impressed uh, with it. Uh, let me ask you this. On, on your website, because it's so hard to get middle school information, it's just hard to get information. Yeah. Even at the high school levels, you know, with some schools, it's very difficult. But talk about your website, what you guys are trying to do with your website. Of course, we'll talk rankings mm -hmm. in a few minutes, but you've got a lot of featured players, some great pictures, some good videos. Talk about how y'all built that. Great staff. I can't take all the credit. Now, it was a time when it was just me. Me, my camera, that's when you met me a long time ago. And I was writing every article, doing every video. But as we were able to grow, then we hired people that are very competent, that do a great job. So that's how we're able to start over. Yeah, and I imagine you're getting some tremendous uh, traffic on this. Yeah. I love this picture of this Maddox, <laughs> this Maddox Gannon with, the, with all the – stuff on his face he's got uh -huh. his face painted up pretty well and everything I know kids like to do that uh, but congratulations I mean it's if if y'all are looking for a great place for middle school information on football born to compete.com uh, is the place to go all right let's real quick before we get to the rankings I do want to ask you sure. um, you do a really good BTC championship series so we're yeah. about to talk about these rankings right now yeah. can you tell the audience a little bit about that and how do you feel that these teams are going to play with this play on the stage in, in this platform you have. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna tell you a couple of things here, right? So of course we have our rankings and you know we have a great staff out there that helps select the teams. And then also too, because we are kids first, we understand that some teams can't compete with other teams, right? So imagine uh, there was a Duluth years ago with uh, Cottrell, uh, Latrell Webb, yep. I think of his name, right? Mess it up. Deuce, Tyler Atkinson, Bryce Perry White, that was the starting defensive line, <laughs> okay? So you can't put them just against anybody because you don't want kids to get hurt. So we try to be smart about it. We talk with the school systems and everything. And we go out and see the kids and see if they can compete with each other. And that's kind of how we picked our final four. Gotcha. All right, let's go into your players of the week. First one, DeAndre Hendricks, Jr., an athlete. Yeah. Uh, from John, John Lewis Middle School. John Lewis is Victor's Academy. City of, uh, what's it, APS. Yeah. Uh, Rendell Jackson, I know he's very happy. Uh, had a great game. They played Kip West. We have the highlights later. But they played Kip West, won 18 to 12 in overtime. DeAndre Hennick, he was next to Casey Barner last year. He was kind of the uh, the uh, Robin, the Casey Barner's Batman. And now it's his time, his spotlight. He's about 5'11", almost 6 foot now. Uh, reminds you of Smoke Monday. Does everybody remember him? Yes. Yes, yes. That, that's who he, who he reminds me of in middle school. Fantastic player offensively and defensively. Does a great job. And where, where is he going to be going to high school? Don't know yet? Don't know. We don't know. The kids from the city of Atlanta, uh, he might go to Doug or, you know, the way the uh, high school uh, world is these days, somebody might come in and just knock on the door. Real quick, what, yeah. do you think he has that same kind of feeling? He can have that freshman type opening that Casey Barner had on TV when we seen him earlier this year for the Coach Tales. Yeah, Casey's a different player. Casey, we compare to Coach Downs, and everybody knows Coach Downs is with us now. And he had a chance to see him, and he said Casey Barner is the closest thing he's seen to Caleb. Mm. Now, with Hennix, Hennix is a different type of player. Very, very smart, very cerebral. Doesn't have necessarily the athletic ability of a Casey Barner. But when you have Link, Link makes up for a lot of different things. So he's going to be a great player moving forward. All right, let's move on. Go to Deuce Grayson, athlete from the Centennial Junior How about him, right? Uh, his dad, real popular guy, Mr. Shut Up and Train. I'm sure people have heard of his dad. Very popular uh, fitness guy out there in the world, uh, especially in the city of Atlanta. He had five touchdowns, actually one called back. So we'll give him four touchdowns. I'm assuming that's why he's holding up the four right there. I uh, had a good game for Centennial through the program. He does a good job. We look to see big things out of him moving forward. And speaking of Centennial, I you know I was the coach, uh, <laughs> one of the coaches at sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, uh, and I've been fortunate because I've coached three NFL players. I've mm -hmm. coached Ty Long, who was a punter yep. and kicker uh, out of Roswell, and then of course uh, Alvin Kamara, who was a pretty decent player. You know what's cool? What's up? We were in Philly. Okay. Okay. So on Sunday. We were following all the games and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, if you're a big Atlanta sports fan, you're not a Dallas fan. So <laughs> we absolutely loved what Alvin and the Saints, uh, okay, did uh, to the Cowboys. And, yeah. of course, Alvin 
and there were some people that were critical of the season last year, mm -hmm. but came off the mat and scored four touchdowns. And I tell people, people are always asking about Alvin, and I said, the funny thing about Alvin is, is and, and look, he came tough upbringing, mm -hmm. okay? And, you know, his situation went to Alabama. Basically, Nick told him, look, I think this isn't the right place for That was for a packed running back room, too, though. Yeah, it was yeah, packed it was. running yeah. back room. But he did go to a junior college, which yeah. I think was a great move. Hutchinson, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, had the great career at Tennessee and then has just, you know, rookie of the year. But I tell people all the time, he was probably suspended more on Saturdays than he actually played in the game. Really? I mean, yeah. You know, Alvin, gr great kid. Okay. Okay. But always somehow found his way a little bit into trouble. Not bad trouble, but just not doing his job on the field and practice and stuff like that. Now, let me ask you real quick. Did yeah. you see some moments, flashes Absolutely. when you saw him when he was younger? Let me tell you what, what he reminded me of. <laughs> okay, he, he, was, he was the first middle school player that I saw that could really catch the football as a runner. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we saw that. And that's where we realized, we didn't realize that he was going to be rookie of the year in the NFL, but we did realize that he had potential to be a great college player and then, of course, move on mm -hmm. to the NFL. The other player we had was Peyton Barber. I mean, oh, our really? backfield, yeah. I mean, was tremendous back then. I mean, and Peyton, of course, went on. We were so thrilled for Peyton Barber. I mean, that's one of the middle school kids, and I'll tell you why. Because Peyton had some academic, you know, some things that he had to deal with academically that were tougher. Um, but what a great kid. And, and, you know, when he made it at Auburn and then went on and made it in the NFL, very, very happy for him. So glad to see a centennial kid yeah. uh, on this list. All right, let's go to the rankings. All right. Uh, real quick, North Clayton still on top. I'll, in fact, I'll let you, there you, go. you North, take a look at you it. You know, North Clayton, they're rolling right now. Won last night 32-0. Some big games that happened. Tequila beat Buford. Milton beats North Cobb. For anybody that knows about this kid, Jordan Peacock, he mm -hmm. is probably the next big thing in the state of Georgia, or as some people say, the state of Atlanta. I get what everybody's saying. So, <laughs> he's Don't a very... Don't tell people down south. I know, you know, yeah. they hate hearing that. And they kick my butt. Today. Very good player. Uh, McEachern beats Cartersville. Jaleel Page scored three different ways. Passing, rushing, and receiving. He's about six foot one, six foot two right now. Phenomenal athlete. We plan on seeing some more good things out of him. I heard that um, that Zach Parker had another good game. Eight for 10, 250 yeah. plus yards, four touchdowns. I mean, I heard he's tearing it up. He is, right now, uh, if we have our watch list, and our watch list comes out for player of the year for middle school, uh, he's going to be up there. All right, he's we got some he's highlights. Level. I go think ahead. we got some highlights. All right, oh, here we go. John Lewis taking on Kip West. Guys, get to know this name, DeAndre Hennick, and the mom said, please put in the junior. That is what we do. Taking a punt, he gets inside the 10-yard line. And here, right after him, Demario Benning. Number six, you're going to see him come up here in a little bit. Demario Benning gets into the end zone, scores a touchdown, and they will be up, I want to say, 6-0 to zero at that time or 12-0, to zero, depending on what we're about to see here. All right, here we go. Yeah, 6-0. to zero. All right, DeAndre Hennix going around the left side, breaks a couple of tackles. And again, guys, this is when you just appreciate watching an athlete this young getting ready to come into his own and you're going to say that is about to go into high school yeah and he, that runs, and he runs upright which exactly looks really good. all right after a score kip west kicks the onside kick and my, now mind you both teams are undefeated kip west kicks the onside kick they get the recovery and now a little bit a little bit above two minutes left in the game watch cepheus barnett break every tackle on wow. the field good Gets into the end zone. Watch the B2C flex. We still do that. That's still a thing for us right now. And it lets everybody know what time it is. <laughs> in overtime, this is overtime 12 to 12. Who do you go to? Of course, right? DeAndre Hennick playing big. And then Kip Westwood gets the ball. Kashmir Lathan would recover the fumble. And, and John Lewis would win the game 18 to 12. Big time ball game for them in ATL. Well, Alex, we appreciate we're running short a little bit, but no we problem. appreciate you coming on yeah. and uh, look forward to seeing you what next week. Don't forget, born to compete.com. We'll be right back.
I'm Najee Wilkins along with Isaac Rosenberg and Craig Sager. We're going to go ahead and get into underrated and overlooked. And we're going to go ahead and start with Malachi Render Fannin of LaGrange. He had a, a really good performance this past week. Rushed for 165 yards and three touchdowns and also returned an 88-yard punt for a touchdown. The next one's going to be Norcal slot receiver Deshaun Sauce Clark. He had 226 yards rushing, two touchdowns, and also two for two for 26 yards and two touchdowns for Norcos. He filled in for Dylan Mohammed, who went out with an injury in the game. Epic performance by Clark, who continues to impress. Then you have Lee County linebacker Greg Batson. He had 12 tackles, four tackles for loss, two QB hurries, and two fumble recoveries in a 47-35 win against Colquitt County. Next is Raven County uh, running back Reed Giles. He had 209 yards on 28 carries in a 24-21 victory against Grimman on Friday, 513 rushing yards and five touchdowns, averaging 120 yards per game. And last but not least, you got um, Treon quarterback Cade Smith uh, off to their second consecutive 5-0 start, uh, 175 points through five games. He's been great. He was 17-21 for 304 yards and three touchdowns. Also ran for three touchdowns on seven carries for 51 yards. I toss it to Craig. All right, let's start with Jake Thorner. He was probably the most underrated player on Walton's defense last year, but he was having a great senior season, five sacks so far. He had four sacks last week against Wheeler, and we'll see number nine this week against North Cobb. He's got a big task ahead. River Ridge, Sam Vincent wanted to shout them out. Uh, they were the team that made such incredible adjustments defensively to shut down that Pope offense that had been torching everyone in the passing game. He came up big in the secondary, intercepted two pass passes. You can tell he... Uh, did his studying and preparation in that and returned one for a touchdown. And he has been nominated for the Superior Plumbing Performance of the Week by the MDJ. All right, next up, you have Lambert, defensive end Jack Conley. Lambert started 0-2. They lost to Mill Creek. They lost to Walton. They were down two touchdowns in the second half to Cherokee. They have a miraculous comeback, and then they shut out West Forsyth. So when you look at uh, Jack Conley, he was a non-factor in those first two matchups, but Mark Beach has started to use him as a pass rusher. He's had seven hurries in both games and came up big in the West Forsyth one with two sacks and seven quarterback pressures. Uh, Creekside Zach Carter, he's listed as an athlete, six foot three. He came up big in the Forest Park win. Creekside obviously had to skip their first game. This is a senior trying to play for his football future. He returned an interception for a touchdown, made three tackles, and had two blocked field goal attempts. So when Creekside, when they're competitive later on this season, you have a weapon that can block field goals with Zach Carter. And then Cambridge, Craig Dandridge at receiver, he came up with a game-winning touchdown in the Denmark game in overtime. And then this last week, a career high, seven receptions, 125 yards, also a career high and intercepted a pass. So he is playing so much more this season, and you can tell uh, Coach Jones has really started to use him. All right, we're going to bring in IJ here. Let's talk a little bit about our game before we conclude and get out of here for today. North Cobb, Walton, what do you think are the keys to that matchup? Well, I mean, I think North Cobb is the more mature team right now. And I think Walton's rebuilding. We, you know, we talked about the fact that, you know, Walton's offensive coordinator is changed. So it's taking them – some time. They've also have some, I know Walton's got some injuries that they're dealing with, and, but Craig can tell you, you know, because we've been following Walton for years. I mean, last year's Walton team, they, you know, you lose the Woods kid, you lose the quarterback. I mean, they lost a lot. They did. I mean, really, I mean, a lot. I mean, it's, you know, sort of similar to, you know, Michigan winning the national championship and, and having to come back and just lose a lot of players. Um, I think Walton will give North Cobb. I think it's always difficult to play at Grado Valley. It's a great place. They pack that place in. North Cobb, that's a really good rivalry between both of them. Uh, but at the same time, I think this is going to be a special year for North Cobb. Craig, I don't know what you think. Yeah, last year they were just ravaged with injuries. That's why they fell off late. But I think the key in this matchup, though, is going to be the big plays that Walton has been vulnerable in giving up. That's what Roswell did to them. And then the turnovers. We saw that with Norcross where they had the four defensive touchdowns they surrendered. North Cobb is known to get out to very fast starts. So if they come out early and, and get some points, Walton has struggled coming from behind, and it could get out of hand. Uh, so I think the key for Walton, they have to keep it close in that first half. All right, guys, as we wrap up, let's go ahead and pull up our graphic. Cork and Kale flag football is right around the corner. Go ahead and get your tickets today to scan that QR code uh, for this year's event on October 2nd. I've already talked to a couple coaches. It's going to be a great event. Greenbrier, Olympia Springs, North Oconee, and so many more teams that will be in there. 
Coming up tomorrow, we are going to have uh, another great segment. Uh, we'll have, you know, our football. Uh, we'll talk about that, our fast book headlines, and much, much more coming up tomorrow on Thursday's show. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you guys tomorrow.